is Russ. Yeah, we're back out on the road again. Turn left onto the shared path. You know, the last time I was out on the road, when was that? That was a while ago. Well, it was last week though. But I actually recorded things a little earlier. I think you saw that one probably on Saturday. I think I recorded that on like a... Did I do that on a Thursday? I'm not sure. <laughs> Wednesday or a Thursday. And of course, by the time you saw it, it was Saturday. I was getting ahead of myself because I needed to get the rides in when I could. And today might be the only day I can ride for a little while because the weather's gonna get colder again. Now, interestingly, I think on that video I mentioned that it was over 70 degrees, just a tad over 70 degrees. Well, on that same day, <laughs> on that same day, yeah, it, uh, it rained like crazy. Yeah, it was coming down hard and it hailed. It was hailing so hard I was thinking it was gonna break our windows. Yeah, it was really bad. It says to take the shared path. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go forward here. So, uh, yeah, the weather changed dramatically within the same day that I went out to ride. Can you believe that? Then, of course, it got cold and everything, so I couldn't go any further. By the time uh, Saturday and Sunday happened, Sunday it happened, um, the, uh, the weather was good again, but I had things to do, and so I couldn't go out to, to ride. So today here is Monday. You'll probably see this video on Tuesday. <laughs> there you go. We're back to our regular schedule a day before you get to see it. So what am I riding today? I don't know if that looks familiar to you or not. You can see that. Yeah, we're on the Electric Bike Company Model S. Yeah, this is the beach cruiser. <laughs> you know, an interesting thing is, is when the beach cruiser first came out, or I shouldn't say that, I should say when they first gave it to me, you know, we added up the grand total of everything I put on this bike, because as you know, they told me, yeah, design it any way you want. Whatever you like, that's what we'll do. I said, anything? They go, yep, anything. Okay. <laughs> I maxed this bike out to its max. Yeah, I think it was like $5,600, something like that in that range. Well, I did it again today. I went on to the website, maxed it all out with the stuff that I had on it, and it was less. It was 4,000 something dollars. 44, 45, 46, I don't know. It was almost like a thousand dollars less. I don't know, did they drop prices? What happened? Am I, did I forget to add something to it? I have no idea. But it looked like it had everything on there that I had put on this bike. So yeah, if you're looking for the Russ is Right version of the bike, meaning max out everything that you could put on the Model S, <laughs> it may be like a thousand dollars less at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of it and um, you know, basically, you can you can change colors. You know what adds a lot to the price is the custom colors. All right. Um, if you took one of their stock colors, it's the same bike. <laughs> okay. Well, you have to add other things to it, but the frame is the same frame. You know, buy their standard color, whatever it is, so they they don't have to paint anything extra. You know, and then put on some basic things, and yeah, it's a, it's a lot less expensive. I don't know what it was. Was it twenty-two, twenty-three hundred dollars base model, something like that? But you know, you're probably going to want certain things on it. You're probably going to want a front fork suspension. You'll probably want a derailleur on there. You know, otherwise it's like a single speed or something like that. Um, but you know, if you want better brakes, or you want better this and that, it just keeps adding up to price. Because a lot of a lot of bikes really, if you put a lot of stuff on your basic bike, yeah, you got a pretty nice bike then at that point, right? They have probably one of the best warranties for their motor too. I think it's like 10 years, 10 year warranty on the motor. Can you believe that? That's nuts. <laughs> so anyway, I have a double battery system on here. As you know, I have a battery in the front basket and a battery um, that's uh, integrated into the rear rack. So both of these batteries are 48 volt, 18 amp hour batteries. So I have 36 volt, uh, 36 amps of battery power here to, to run with. Right now I have both of them on. Sometimes I just run with one and then then I, all I have to do is charge up one. But this time I have both of them on at the same time. So they're running I think in parallel at this point. So you could do that or you can just turn on the front or turn on the back, whichever you want to do. 
So where are we headed today? Well, I figured what we would do is we would ride towards the um, Prospect Heights Trail. I used to do this all the time. Okay, I'm gonna let this guy go first. And, um, and then we will, uh, we will decide if we actually go on the trail or we just turn back around and come back, all right? It's a little chilly today. Uh, it will go to 70 degrees, they said, but it won't happen till like two o'clock. Well, right now it's 11.15. And the reason I decided that I would, uh, I would go now is I, I've been up since like 6.30 in the morning and I've just been like, when's it gonna warm up so I can get out on my bike? <laughs> I pedal a little bit here. So yeah, I just said, you know, forget it. I'm not gonna wait until that time. I'm just gonna go out. So I didn't put lots of stuff on, but I do have things on that I thought I wouldn't have to do. I have the full finger gloves on again. Yeah, it was a little chilly, so I said, yeah, I gotta put some gloves on. I don't have the winter jacket on though, but I do have two sweatshirts on. I have my Fisherman's Life sweatshirt on the top. So on the hood, you know, the hood's not on me, but because it kind of goes near your neck and stuff. Yeah, oops, sorry. I don't know if I put my arm across the camera there. Um, it keeps your neck a little bit warmer, right? And I found that I had to put back the uh, the helmet liner on my x Nito helmet because that thing has, you know, it, it'll keep your head warm, but it also has like earmuffs. On it, so um, that helped. I, I left without it. I went right back home and put it back on. <laughs> now you might notice the blinking light is on. Now, I had a number of comments. People don't like the blinking light, or they've had people comment, "Turn off that blinking light." Right? Well, I ride on the street a lot, as you know, and so for me, whether they like it or they don't. It keeps me safe, that's why it's on, okay? I just want oncoming traffic knowing that I'm coming. I don't aim it directly in their eyes. As you notice, you can see it bouncing off of the, uh, the basket a little bit there. I kind of aim it a little bit further down. So they'll see it, but they, they won't be blinded so much by it. And others have said too, when they go on a bike trail, they turn it off. Yeah, that probably is a good idea. But they also did mention that maybe sometimes you'll forget to turn it on. That's, that's true. <laughs> So, um, but today we're on the street most of the time. Now, will I turn it off on the trail? Yeah, maybe, yeah. If I remember to, if I don't, oh well, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, you know. I was thinking a little bit too about this electric bike company bike. This is a true class two, true class three bike. Meaning, if you, uh, if you don't want it to be a class three, it comes to you as a class two initially. You can uh, turn it into, into a class three if you go into the menu and tell it you want to turn it into a class three. But because it is a true class three, it won't throttle past 20 miles per hour, but you can pedal it to 28 miles per hour. A lot of, a lot of my bikes won't do that. It'll, it'll throttle all the way up to 28 miles an hour, which makes it uh, kind of a pseudo class three. It's not really truly the way the regulation is set for. And it got me thinking, you know, since everyone's talking about regulations this, these last few weeks, you know, a lot of channels have been talking about it. If it ever came down to where they said, you can do class three, but we're checking bikes, I would have to literally take most, if not all of my bikes, not this one, but most of the other ones would have to be turned back down to a class two bike because they throttle to 28 which skates the law right i hope it doesn't come to that point i personally like having the throttle to go to 28 when i need the power i want the power there's times that it'll get you out of situations and so so i like i like it when it does that now the interesting thing about this particular bike this one um will only throttle to as fast as your pedal assist level is set for. Like for instance, if you're in pedal assist level one, I don't know how fast that goes. Let's say 12 miles an hour, I don't know. What, whatever it happens to be, okay? I'm gonna move this up to five here. If, uh, if let's say you're on pedal assist level one and it only does 12 miles an hour to help you when you pedal, when you hit that throttle to full maximum throttle, it'll only throttle to 12 miles an hour, okay? And whatever 
whatever pedal assist level 2 is. Let's say that goes to 16. I don't know. I'm guessing. Okay. Say it goes to 16. It'll only throttle to 16. So your throttle on this bike only goes as fast as the pedal assist is set for. They do that for a safety factor um, so that you can't accidentally throttle past the pedal assist level. Um, I don't know if I like that so much, but <laughs> you know, a lot of times I'll, you'll see me leaving it at pedal assist level 5 if I'm throttling all the way. Because then I'm uh, feathering the throttle where I can go faster or slower based on the throttle wherever I want to put it. And then if I need full power, it'll go to 20 miles per hour. So right here, as I'm passing this road, I'm going to need a little power to get me going and, and to get past this road quicker. So the easiest thing is to leave it on pedal assist level 5 and then I can throttle as fast as I can get the, through the intersection and then if I want to go back down I can go back down to 3 or whatever you know I want. But a lot of times the way I start my ride starting from a dead stop here is I will throttle it to get me moving. I'm just waiting for it to turn here. Here we go. So I hit the throttle, I step up onto the bike, I pedal a little bit to help it. And then I will just continue throttling to get me moving past here. The reason I do this is because I don't want to stay in the intersection any longer than I have to. Because a lot of accidents happen at intersections and I don't want to be a statistic. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to go into the, uh, into the lane here. And the reason is because I'm going to have to turn at the stop sign coming up. There's a car behind me. He's probably wondering why I'm in his lane, but I'm turning, so I have to do it. So I'm going to signal, let him know I'm going to take a left turn here, so he knows. You know, the problem with putting your arm out for doing turn signals is because, you know, so you can't hit the brakes. You got hand brakes. If your hand is sticking out, you can't really hit the brakes, right? So that is a, that is a problem sometimes. So it's kind of overcast today. So I, I, I started really seriously wondering whether it's ever really going to hit 70, 70 degrees. The thing is, the earlier I get out there, it frees up my day to do other things too, right? Otherwise, I'm just sitting around watching TV, usually watching YouTube, and, uh, and I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for time to get out there. So I just said, forget it. I'm, I'm going out. I'll just put on a little more clothes and head out there. All right, let's lower this pedal assist down a little bit. Oh, somebody asked me too about uh, shifting. They said, I noticed that you usually leave your shifter at seven and then you throttle. Well, actually it's usually on six, <laughs> just so that you know, six out of seven on the, on the, uh, on the thing. And the reason is because uh, I do throttle a lot when I'm on camera so I don't usually use the, 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 the pedal assist and I don't usually have to, to, to use the, uh, the gears here on the right hand side here. I mean your gears really are, are there for when you're pedaling. Gears mean nothing when you're throttling, okay? So uh, that's the reason why. So, so they wanted to clarify what's the best setting to ride on. Well, that's, that's dependent on a lot of things. I put my hand off to let them know I'm making a turn. Um, if you have fairly flat lands like I do here in the Chicago area, um, a lot of times my gears are set for six and my pedal assist is set for around three, sometimes four. If you have a pedal assist that goes one through five, that is, okay? A lot of times I set my pedal assist levels from seven to nine which is different than most of you guys. Uh, there's a lot of in-between numbers then there. Okay, so if I said, well, I want to go a little faster, but I don't want to go really fast, then have an in-between number between yours, right? If you're one to five, it could be of a more serious jump. Stop here. It could be a more serious jump in the, uh, in the speed that I don't want to do. So if you have in-between numbers, that makes it easier to do that, okay? So, uh, so what is the best setting to set at? Well, I think for the average person, all right, maybe um, 
gears on six, pedal assist on three out of five. That's a good starting point, and then you can adjust accordingly as you need it. So, hopefully that'll help you. <laughs> You'll get the hang of it, it's just a matter of getting used to it. Now this one has a, a throttle control on the left hand side because there's stuff here on the right. Your shifter's here, I have my bell over here too, on my right hand side. But this is a, it's a little bit different. This, this handlebar curves toward you. And by the way, if you buy a Model S, you don't have to have these handlebars if you don't want. These are, these are beach cruiser style handlebars. You can get straight handlebars. You can get, you can get even one that rises up. It's kind of like a chopper style handlebar if you wanted to. They have an option of different handlebars for, for your bike now. When I had it, uh, I think this was the only option. And I, I wanted this because, you know, all my other bikes are straight handle. I said, let's try something different. You know, I was, I was seriously looking, I think, at, at the Model R originally. But I said, you know, that looks like every other bike I have. I said, let's, let's, let's make a change. Let's do something totally different. I said, well, one thing we don't have is a beach cruiser. <laughs> so I said, let's deck it out to make it really look like a beach cruiser. So it's got the wooden fenders. It's got the wooden uh, chain guard on. The basket is silver with the uh, insert, metal insert, painted the same color as the, as the bike. I even have a helmet from them that's painted the same color as the bike. Um, I've worn it only a couple times. I, I don't have it on now. Uh, and the only reason I don't use it uh, really is because um, the microphone, as you know, for my recordings are attached to my helmet's visor. And that helmet does not have a visor, so I can't attach the microphone. And because of that, I will get ready to go again. Uh, because of that, I um, I still use the X Nido helmet, so I can attach the microphone easier. Come on, I'm waiting for this thing to turn here. Move over this way. Yeah, they gotta fix this road, man. <laughs> a lot of potholes, cracked roads, and everything. You know, every year in Chicago, they're always fixing. Um, they're always fixing roads. Some roads need to be done. They're too busy doing other roads, they don't get to the other part of it. I've seen where they do part of a road and then they leave the other part. And the other part needs it just as bad as the one that they're fixing, yeah, go figure. But I guess they can't just continue, continue, continue. They gotta make a cutoff somewhere, but it makes no sense to me when you see it's actually broken and then just leave it. <laughs> oh well, whatever. So what else is going on? Let's see, we talked about lights, talked about our lousy weather, <laughs> but we had good weather and then we had some bad weather too. My daughter was telling me that the hail that was from her side where she lived, the hail when it was coming down was the size of peanut M&Ms. Think about that, that's pretty hefty. One of my friends from church told me that she uh, she was riding her in her car and I was on the highway and it started coming down um, and she was really f afraid what would happen uh, and then she noticed that some of the cars were pulling underneath the overpasses on the highway and so she found the next overpass she could do and she stopped over there as well yeah you don't you don't want to you don't want to have that hail hitting you while you're moving forward on a car and it's heavy, heavy rain. You can't even see. It's terrible. So luckily for her, she, uh, she came out of it safe and I asked her if her car had any hail damage. She said no, it did not. So she was lucky. <laughs> a lot of cars in this area get hail damage. Because the cars are outside, the hail comes down, it just puts pits into your car. All right. <laughs> so on this ride, I'm kind of doing some pedaling, some of it not. But 
But again, I got to get used to the fact that uh, the pedal assist is something I have to keep in mind. Again, from, from a semi-stop to a go, I will throttle a little bit to get me moving faster. And then I'll back off on the throttle and just continue pedaling, if I plan to pedal. Okay. Now, a lot of times you guys have said, you know, why don't you pedal? I do. <laughs> I just don't do it on camera. I usually do it on the way home. I'm not the best pedaler, admittedly. I don't have the leg strength and stuff. Um, but I do what I can. But, you know, at least for last year, I, I would be really winded if I was doing it. Okay, so we got to keep going forward here. So, uh, I don't want to let you guys hear me huffing and puffing. <laughs> Sometimes you hear it, you know, but, uh, but I think I was huffing and puffing even more because I had the high blood pressure stuff going on. So any extra exertion, you're really taxing your heart. So I'm huffing and puffing. This year, since we're taking some medication to help that, hopefully it won't be as much, right? Like right now, I'm not really huffing and puffing too much, but I've been pedaling for a little bit here and there. Now, I've been doing the health updates on Mondays, as you know, not all of you watch it. And uh, some of you started and then kind of backed off away from it. But I think what I'll do is I'll get detailed health updates on Mondays, but I'll throw in some health things in between as we're riding too. Because that is what's happening in my life, and to, to absolutely like, like not mention any of it at all doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense either. <laughs> so, so I might as well have mentioned some stuff. Okay, we're actually at Lake Arlington right now. It's asking me to go on Lake Arlington. Uh, well, there are people walking there. Is, is there a way that you can go that's not Lake Arlington? I mean, I'm using the Apple Maps to tell me this, tell me to do it. So let's just do it. If somebody says something, let them say something. Turn Thing is, they may not know because this this doesn't really look like an e-bike too much. I mean, if, if they look at the. Uh, If, if they look at the rear rack, they'll see a battery there. Otherwise, it looks like a regular bike, really. A big regular bike. <laughs> well, people go out here fishing and they, they go walking around here too. Let, let me, if I get a chance, I'll angle here. I'll let you see the lake a little bit there. I usually use my left hand to do that, but uh, the throttle's on the left hand, so I can't really, uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to hold off here. I think he's on the wrong side there. <laughs> Thank you. I think the way that they have this uh, set up is the bikes and stuff is supposed to be on the right side and walkers are supposed to be on the left side of this yellow line. It's a little different than some other the other paths that I have, but in that case, I had walkers on the left and walkers on the right. So what am I supposed to do to get in between? Luckily, the one lady let me get by. I've never had anyone say anything while I was on this path before, but all paths now, I'm a little nervous about people making comments. You know, many of you guys says, you know, don't let it bother you, but you know, if after a while it does bother you. <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of like, uh, kind of takes the fun out of it sometimes, right? But yeah, on this Lake Arlington, there's, a, there's always a lot of walkers. There's more walkers than bike riders, I think, on this path. The signs are down, though. They're usually, uh, during the summertime, they'll have signs up here that says, walk on the left side of this thing, ride on the right side of this thing. and. They do have it painted on the path, but it's so worn out, nobody could really see it and read it well. But I think they took it down during winter time. Okay, this is gonna be tough here now. 
<laughs> All right, we'll go this way. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I don't know if I should have turned there. There's uh, there's some exit points here, and I think it's asking me to take the next exit point. The thing with the Apple Maps is, is uh, if you tell it you want the bike route, it tries to look for the least, um, the route with the least amount of cars on it. So I guess they figure taking this uh, Lake Arlington path has the least cars on it, and so it's safer for everybody. But I'm sure there's 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 roads you can take instead of taking this, but. I was already here, so might as well do it. <laughs> and this road, this this uh, path area usually has a lot of geese. Anytime you have a lot of uh, water in there, the geese will tend to hang around there. Those are the Canadian geese that come down from Canada, came down, never left. <laughs> Migrants. <laughs> Migrant uh, geese. All right, so what I did here, uh, it's telling me to turn so we'll take a left turn here. No car, so it's easy. Um, I lost my train of thought again. This is a problem here, you know, when something takes my mind off of something, I forget about what I was talking about. <laughs> ah, it doesn't matter, it was probably not important anyway. It, it is, uh, it's, it does have some wind. I'm sure you guys could probably hear some of that. You know, if I didn't have that wind filter on the mic, it'd be even worse. Turn right onto North Cold Spring Road. Then the destination is on your left. Oh, okay, now I remember what I was gonna say. To get to where I wanted to go, it is the entrance point to the uh, Prospect Heights Trail, but it didn't have an address. So typically what I'll do is I'll, I'll, go, I'll go on the map and I'll try to do what they call dropping a pin on something. I'm gonna have to go here, so I'm taking a left, cut across here. <laughs> Had to do it quick because a uh, car was coming up from behind me too. I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted to uh, hang out with me. All right, let's stop here real quick. I'm gonna turn off this map system. In a quarter mile, turn left onto the road. End route. All right, let me turn that off. Save my battery. <laughs> I will say that the, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has a very long life battery. I can go a couple days without charging if I want to, but now with the continuous glucose monitor that I have on my arm, that app has to stay on all the time and of course that that drains the battery then but if it wasn't for that app yeah i would have a very long battery life on my on my phone i'll give you an update too um the last uh riding video we had i was saying that uh, my magic cycle deer 26 inch bike had a squeak going on, right? And I thought it could have been the rear rack. The rear rack was a little bit loose, so I tightened it up, but it wasn't that. It was actually the spring. It's the uh, suspension spring. And somebody uh, had, had told me that uh, his wife's Deer 20 had the same thing, and they sent them a new spring, and he replaced the spring. So I, uh, I uh, sent an email to Magicycle Asked them if they can send me a replacement spring for my 26 inch bike, and uh, they said that they would. And I said, Give me some instructions how to put this thing together, too, because <laughs> I got I don't know how to take it apart and put it together. So they said that they will uh, send me some instructions, too. So thank you to uh, our viewer giving me a heads up about that. Magical Cycle said it is a possibility that maybe some some uh, water or salt or corrosion or something could have gotten onto the spring and maybe causing it to, uh, to, to, to do that, to squeak and everything. So I kept thinking about it. I said, it's the only thing it could be that, because I don't usually take the bikes out when it rains or anything, but 
I did take it out when I first got the bike and there was snow, right? There was a little bit of snow and things. Could it be that some of that got on there and caused it to, to, to cause a squeak? I don't know. But that does tell me one thing is that if you, if you have one of their bikes, you may, you may want to avoid being going through water puddles and stuff. Because if that is a cause of a problem, then you're not going to want to do that, right? So it's just passing some info to you about what they said to me. Uh, okay, time to go. Time to go when you can go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, this I remember this uh, this path is very bumpy. Yeah, they fixed uh, part of it here. I think I, don't, I think this is uh, uh, Wheeling that we're at. Wheeling, Illinois, and then it goes into Prospect Heights. They fixed this with the blacktop, but it still has a certain amount of bumps. Then you'll see a little later, um, this, this nice dark black blacktop will go away because it goes into Prospect Heights area, and of course they didn't fix that part, because <laughs> that, that would be up to Prospect Heights, the, uh, the village of Prospect Heights, to, to pay for that, and they didn't do it. But as you see, there's, there's a bump every, I don't know, it's almost rhythmic. I don't know why, but there is, and of course, you know, you're bumping all over the place on this on this path. Well, she's nice and bright; you can't miss her. They got uh, pink, pink everything, so you can't miss her. Now, again, I don't have my safety vest on. I haven't had it on for this whole winter time period because the uh, safety vest is kind of tight. The only one that fits over all this stuff is the old safety vest, and that one's really worn out looking. So uh, the new ones that I bought last year, they don't fit over all the clothing I have here. Now, let me give you some updates too, We're talking about clothing here. As you know, I've lost uh, like 22 pounds already. Things are getting looser. The pants that I wear actually don't really fit me anymore, but I wear them anyway. <laughs> if I didn't have a belt on, my pants would fall off. Yeah, just to let you know. <laughs> Not that you probably really wanted to know, but yeah, it's, it's getting to that point. Now, I kept some of my older clothes, but I always jumped two sizes. So I never bought like the next size down and the next size down and whatever. I always bought uh, stuff that was like the two sizes down or something, or two sizes up. And uh, so, if I jump to the next size pants that I have, unless I want to go up by the next size down, which I'm not gonna because I'm thinking I might lose some more. To get to that one, I'm not quite there yet. So I can't really wear it. It's still a little tight because it's essentially two sizes down, which is essentially four inches off your waistline. I'm down at least two inches off my waistline, I would say that, if not more, but at least two. So I'm waiting a little bit to fit the older ones that are two sizes down. <laughs> Meaning four inches down on waistline, waist size. Okay, so, but that's good, yeah. Um, you know, the lighter you are, the more range you should get out of your bike battery because you're not asking your bike motor to, uh, to help a heavier weight to move, right? So. So yeah, when we when we do this trail later in the year, you know things will be all green and everything, so it looks really nice and everything. Man, it's really bouncy. It's just making my battery and my and my basket bounce like crazy. I could hear it rattling in there. Um, I never was able to uh, take that battery off the basket to put more padding underneath it. I, I couldn't get it off of it, so <laughs> so it'll just have to rattle the way it rattles. This area here, um, let me pull the camera here on the left here. Yeah, that's uh, a whole bunch of high tension wire type stuff. Scary looking stuff. And if it rains, you could hear the, the wires crackling and everything. Yeah, really scary. They put this fence up uh, to the left. They didn't have it before. They had like a, they had a fence, but they didn't have this meshing that they do now. It makes it hard, harder to see through. You can't see what they're doing. And then you can't, of course, climb it as well. 
so they put that on there. Um, I kind of wish it was a little more open. It, it was always more interesting to see when it was open. I know I, I mentioned in the past that it kind of reminds me of a place that James Bond would go to have a chase scene, you know, chase him up and down the high tension wires. <laughs> then the bad guy dies by getting electrocuted. That's the kind of mind I have. <laughs> I'm writing movies as I'm as I'm uh, writing. Okay, this path doesn't really go that anywhere. Really, it goes through this general area. It goes into uh, uh, I think uh, the park is called River Trails Park or something like that. And, um, and then you either turn around or you can continue on into Mount Prospect, but the trail itself kind of stops at that point. Usually what I do is I go into the park area, I, I look at the pool to see if they put water in it. They would not, would not at this point, of course. <laughs> and then I turn around and I usually head back. That's, that's, that's usually my typical ride on this trail. All right. The, um, the brakes on this bike, too, are four-piston brakes. These are the... Uh, Tetro Dorado, Dorado brakes, which are really good brakes. Yeah, I'll stop you on a dime. Everything about this bike is kind of uh, first class, I think. I mean, the cable management is really good on here. I mean, just it's, it's all wrapped and it goes straight into the into the bike. It's really nice. The one thing it doesn't have is a place to put a water bottle. So what I do is I, like I do to many of my bikes, I will uh, zip tie a water bottle cage to the basket and then I just put my, my bottle there. It's actually easier to get to too and it doesn't get in your way. You know, a lot of the bottle cages would be on the down tube somewhere down here, down that area. Problem with that is that, you know, when you try to step through the bike, you gotta go around the bottle then, right? So if it's not even in there, you have more of a accessible step through pathway. Oh, I forgot to turn off my blinking light. There's nobody on this path anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just leave it on or I'll end up forgetting to uh, turn it back on later. Now there's other ways to get to this area, obviously, besides the, uh, the bike trail. You can take streets, but you know, technically, if you're not in a rush to get from place to place, if you take bike paths like this, it's just safer for you as a bike rider to get from point A to point B. Anyways, uh, yesterday I saw a bunch of bike riders out trying to take advantage of the uh, weather while they could. But I had a function to go to, and so I couldn't uh, couldn't go out. I I actually don't like riding on Saturdays and Sundays, anyways. I think I told you guys that before, because there's there's more people on on the road, and um, as far as the bike paths and stuff are concerned. So I just find it uh, easier to do it during the weekday when people are at work. I'm out and riding. It's the one benefit of uh, being retired. <laughs> you can you can do things when other people are, are are doing something else, right? Oh, let me address another thing too. Somebody uh, somebody made another rude comment. I'm always telling you guys these rude comments. Um, well, I don't know if it was a rude comment. It was kind of a he was saying that you know my my videos aren't good review videos you're just talking about everything else in the world while you're out riding yeah that's because it's not a review video <laughs> when we're doing that like this ride okay this is not a review of this bike i reviewed this bike a long time ago in fact you want to see that review just go to the electric bike company website and uh look for the model s go down on the page and you'll see a link to my video there yeah or you can look it up on Russ's right and just look up Electric Bike Company Model S or something like that. You should find it if you search it in YouTube. 
those videos are review videos okay those are the videos that these companies expect me to do in exchange for using for you know for them giving me the bike and i've done that for this bike and all my other bikes i've already done it so i'm not obligated to even ride their bike anymore if i don't want to so when i'm taking bikes out like now they're not review videos okay hey so how did we end up over here on the street <laughs> One moment we're on the path and now we're on the street again. Well, my battery ran out on my GoPro. Yeah, we were recording so much stuff I didn't even realize I'm going past the limit of my battery. So, well, I just decided, well, let's just forget it. <laughs> I'll turn it back on when I'm back on the road. So anyway, not much else to say, really. I just wanted to at least do a sign off. I could have just let it run out and then left it as it is, but then that wouldn't have been any fun, right? It's like, hey, what happened to the video? Just kind of cut, cut off. <laughs> Can't leave you hanging like that. Well, anyways, I appreciate you guys riding along with me today, and uh, we'll see if we're able to go out again. Like I said, this might be the only time I can do it for this week. Weather didn't look that great uh, for the forecasts coming up. Like I said, if it's under a certain degree, I'm not heading out. You know, wind chill is gonna get you. Like right now, it still shows about uh, 59 degrees, something like that. It said it was gonna hit 70. I don't think it's gonna. There's no sun out. Yeah, there's no sun out, and it's just overcast the entire time. So, yeah, leaving when I did probably was the best thing. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you guys next time.